Thank you so much for your kind invitation, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, Connectum, and of course, uh, in uh, the um, very special field, uh, I mean, uh, surgery for low grade glioma, but also to see the quality of life of patients and uh, also the cognitive uh, issues. Indeed, we've uh, now 25 years of uh, follow up uh, in this uh, field. Uh, I can really say that. Uh, we uh, were able to change significantly both the survival of the patients, but also their quality of life. And to achieve this goal, what we did is first of all to do early surgery, including in uh, incidental discovery of Le Grey glioma, maximal rosation, uh, including supratotal rosation when feasible for functional issues, and safe rosation, and to do that, we need absolutely to understand the connectome, then the white matter tracts and the connectivity. Very quickly regarding the oncological issues, because this is not the main topic today, but I think it's important to remind that uh, when I started uh, 20 years ago, uh, the median survival in low gray glioma was around uh, six to seven years, and now it's uh, beyond uh, uh, 16 to 17 years, so we changed radically the survival. And also we were able to preserve the quality of life, as I said, with uh, this uh, recent publication we made with my friend, uh, uh, Luc Taillandier in Nancy, with more than uh, uh, 16 years uh, of median survival. And you see the vast majority of patients who return to a normal life uh, for at least 10 to uh, 20 years. How is it possible? Because definitely we changed the paradigm regarding brain processing. And uh, I will continue to claim that we have definitely to uh, burn localizationism because we know that the brain is more complex with uh, not only a networking uh, uh, brain organization, but uh, as I will introduce now, a meta networking uh, networks of networks, uh, functioning of uh, uh, central nervous system. First of all, what we have to understand is the limitation of neuroplasticity. And to do that, we have to do systematically for all our patients before and after surgery and before and after each treatment, objective neuropsychological you know, assessment. And in uh, uh, at least uh, 40 to 50% cases, uh, of course, patients before any treatment have already some degrees of cognitive deficits. But that's true also in incidental discovery for the gray glioma. We published this paper very recently in Journal of Neurosurgery by telling we have to do objective cognitive assessment at diagnosis uh, in front of uh, incidental the gray glioma. And uh, as you know, probably uh, the deficit is not related to the location of the tumor, but to the invasion of the white matter tract, the subcortical connectivity, which is the limitation of neuroplasticity, explaining why it's so important for juniors to better understand more quickly and more accurately this uh, uh, subcortical connectivity. And when the uh, brain reached the limitation of neuroplasticity, then finally it will it will produce uh, seizures. So as you know, also, I like to use uh, fMRI DTI for more than 20 years, at least for fMRI, before and after surgery in order to better understand mechanisms of neuroplasticity. So it's a very good didactic tool and research tool. But I do this uh, methodology within the operating theater because the sensitivity and reliability is not enough, at least for me, um, at the individual level. So for 25 years, I have the habit to weigh the patient and to do electrical cortical and subcortical mapping, so giving a unique opportunity to have new insights into the function of the Y matter tract and not just the anatomy. We can do anatomofunctional correlation in real time in 2D war. I'm sure you have uh, the habit now to do that uh, in your respective departments. And the question is, uh, uh, in all cases, the same. What kind of tasks for what kind of patients? And if all patients, of course, would like uh, to avoid to be aphasic, hemiplegic, is definitely not enough in order to enjoy a perfect normal life. 
and uh, we have the habit to uh, um, create a, a specific uh, battery of tasks for this patient according to his her profession, hobby, habits, uh, leisure, lifestyles, and so on, in order to give him her a normal, familiar, professional, social life uh, following uh, uh, this uh, connectome-based uh, surgery according to the better understanding of networks uh, during uh, the uh, resection. And this is the reason why it's so important also to understand not only the patient himself, but uh, his environment, uh, because uh, the law is not the same. Uh, and uh, you can drive uh, with Eminapia uh, in some countries, like uh, in uh, uh, North Africa, while uh, you cannot in France. Uh, or, uh, of course, uh, alphabetic language is not exactly the same regarding the neural basis and the capacity of recovery uh, versus ideographic language. Or um, I like to say that uh, we have the chance in France uh, to be reimbursed for the cognitive rehabilitation within the weeks following surgery and then improving uh, the return to normal life. But we have also, of course, into the OR, adapt the tasks, as I did this morning, for instance, according to the lobar location plus the Y matter tract when we are in the depth. And then we have to better understand the structure of the projection and association tracts, but also their functions. And recently, I published a paper in Acta Neurochirurgica for juniors in order to say that. Uh, Whatever the lobar location uh, for of the tumor, for instance, within Broca's area, you see, which uh, definitely does not exist because this patient is one, uh, within the uh, uh, inferior parietal lobule, within the temporal lobe, whatever this location. In all cases, you will be into the contact of this connectivity, the dorsal pathway, the arcuate fasciculus, in the end of surgery. And you will induce by stimulating this connectivity a transitory conduction aphasia. So you see that you cannot say, I will map and monitor the phonological processing, for instance, of language, according uh, to the fact that the tumor is involving the frontal, parietal, or temporal uh, uh, lobe in this example. Because in all cases, you will be into the contact of this connectome in the end. So we have to think differently, explaining why I cannot use a DTI into my, my OR, because I know it's not reliable. So good news for uh, many uh, uh, young people, you can uh, operate uh, with 99% of reliability, about more than 1,000 awake surgeries. In my experience, uh, with a fork and knife, uh, you don't need your navigation, DTI, fMRI, intraoperative MRI, microscope, because what you want, if you know your functional anatomy of the brain. And of course, uh, you will adapt to each patient according to mechanisms of neuroplasticity in order to preserve perfect quality of life. So we have to understand and accept definitely that the brain is made by two hemispheres and non-dominant hemisphere on the right uh, side, explaining that uh, we have to wake the patient for language in the left and uh, uh, to, do away, um, to do a sleep surgery lapsus uh, in the right non-dominant hemisphere means nothing. Because this morning, in order to operate or to give this talk in front of you now, I need both hemispheres. I have a brain. And in the right so-called non-dominant hemisphere, you have um, the control of complex movement if uh, you are a surgeon or if you love to play golf or to play piano, spatial cognition in order to drive social cognition for these relationships with others, nonverbal semantics. I know that uh, you have not the same symbolic in uh, uh, Istanbul, of course. So that means uh, that you have understood and I have not to speak because the vast majority of cases in the world we have not to talk executive uh, working memory, so the capacity to do many things uh, simultaneously, but also the personality, the emotion, because we are human beings. And on this basis, you can add 
all tasks you want into the OR, like uh, the judgment if you are a lawyer, calculation if you are uh, a teacher, and especially a mathematician, spatial cognition in the right non dominant hemisphere if you are a dancer, working memory if you want to uh, make a synthesis online with uh, so many informations. But in all cases, in all cases, uh, we need, first of all, to preserve emotion and behavior because human being is emotion. And yes, we can do that in 2D or if we know the anatomy, not only the cortex, but the Y matter tract. And typically, to give you uh, some examples for the bimanual co coordination for complex movement, you, we published recently uh, a map uh, in brain uh, um, able to control the so-called primary motor cortex, but also with Y matter tracts and especially a uh, uh, junction between uh, the fat frontal astral tract and frontal striatal tract. You cannot have a perfect movement if you have not the somatosensory feedback. So the thalamocortical somatosensory pathway, but it's not enough. We published two years ago in Brain the fact that we have also to be aware about uh, our body so bodily awareness, you can map and monitor it into the operating theater, which is absolutely critical if you want, once again, to make sport a high level. Recently, we republished a paper by telling if you continue to believe on the fact that uh, 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 Broca's era is the area of speech, I have the regret to tell you that you're wrong because now even your logist accepted finally that you can have a stroke in Broca's era, but if you have a preservation of a con connectivity, why matter tract underlying the inferior frontal gyrus, then the patient will recover. They needed one century in order to accept that. That's crazy. But we publish uh, the uh, modeling of uh, the connectivity underlying language uh, many years ago based uh, on the observation we made into the operating theater. And especially with, uh, once again, the dorsal pathway involved in uh, phonological uh, processing, repetition processing, but also the lateral part, the superior longitudinal fascicle in articulatory processing. The ventral semantic pathway involved in uh, verbal and non-verbal semantic processing. So we need both in order, of course, to understand the world around us, but also the inferior longitudinal fasciculus involved in lexical access. That means that if you cut the anterior part, the patient will not be aphasic, but we need an increased time reaction in order to have an access to the words. And what means in practice? We correlated that with the return to work. Of course, if you need more time due to a problem with executive functions, as we will see, but also in order to have lexical access, that means that you will have difficulties in order to work fully at least. So on the right non-dominant hemisphere, definitely if you want to avoid uh, any neglect in order to drive or to dance or to play uh, golf or to swim, then you need to preserve uh, the uh, part two of the superior longitudinal fasciculus. And uh, uh, recently uh, we also published uh, the oculomotor pathways, very important in ocular saccades, but also attentional processing. And if you put everything all together, you can uh, start to model now the network, including, of course, why matter tracks uh, involved in uh, uh, the uh, attentional processing, which are so critical in order to enjoy perfect normal life, even if you are not a fuzzy hemiplegic. Working memory, we spoke about that. Uh, uh, you remember probably the past uh, slide the slide before, 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 three back. Patient, most of the time with a glioma, especially a le gray glioma, are not able to have a normal three back score, but just a two back score. And then they will have problems in order to work normally, for instance. So we decided into the operating theater, whatever the side, to ask a patient to do at least dual, but also sometimes three tasks simultaneously, 
That means that you do not increase uh, the timing of surgery. I do not increase the number of stimulation, just four seconds, but the patient is able to move, to speak, to understand, and uh, uh, to be focused on what he's doing for one hour without any rest, so sustain attention. And then we were able to rehabilitate specifically executive function following surgery. Remember, we have the chance to be reimbursed and not just language with a speech therapist or movement with a physiotherapist, but also working memory, mental flexibility, attentional processing, and so on. And this is very important for the control of yourself. And uh, one year ago or two years ago, we published a paper about uh, the perseveration, which is true for language, but also for the action and behavior. And we can preserve that, especially if you preserve the frontostriatal tract, the inferior frontoccipital fascicle running into the head of the caudate. So once again, the inferior frontoccipital fascicles, but now seen in the right non-dominant hemisphere. And uh, just this morning, uh, I did exactly this kind of surgery and I asked a patient to do a non-verbal semantic association task. And when I stimulated, the patient was not able uh, to uh, combine the gloves with uh, hands, for instance, without speaking, just by looking at the pictures with processing disorders by stimulating the right non-dominant I4. Fortunately, the I4 is bilaterally organized and running to the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in both hemispheres involve plus minus in language, but in all cases in verbal plus minus non-verbal semantics. And when we started to understand that, so movement, language, cognition, we have also to go towards emotional processing, what I like to call mentalizing, namely the uh, possibility to perceive and interpret the uh, and attribute the intentions of your behavior, like for instance, uh, autism-like. And we induce this kind of modification. We published that uh, recently, in fact, in uh, Acta Neurochirurgical by Italy. Be careful not only about the cognition, but also emotional processing. And then we introduced into the OR uh, eight years ago, approximately, the read uh, uh, the mind in hours by asking patients to recognize the expression, uh, uh, the emotion expressed by face in front of you. And when you stimulate cortically, but also subcortically, you can induce modification of empathy, not only at the level of the inferior frontal gyrus, but the dorsolateral prefrontal, but also uh, the superior temporal cortex. And then you can see a network and underlying this network, the white matter tracks, and typically the right inferior frontal fasciculus. And I will not insist on the fact that the right singularity is also involved in a higher level. So the attribution of intentions of others and not just emotion. The kind of uh, modeling we made uh, based on the real anatomy, the structure, uh, thanks to dissection performed in our lab, but also the intraoperative stimulations in the so-called right non dominant hemisphere. So my question is very simple. How do you want to preserve the quality of life of human being if you are doing this kind of surgery within the right hemisphere under general anesthesia? I will tell you, it's simply impossible. And if you do not believe me, please show me the post-operative cognitive uh, assessment emotional assessment and the return to work. And I will sh show you my results. And now one step ahead, the metacognition, to be aware about the fact that you should know what you know. Otherwise, how do you want to plan what you would like for your own life for the next 20 years? Remember my patients are living now more or less one generation. Do you want to buy a house to have a baby? So how do you want to preserve this metacognition. And we published just this week another paper about the self-evaluation of patients into the operating theater without increasing the 
time or the number of stimulation, and you can see the Y matter connectivity. But in, in fact, here, with the stimulation processing inducing disruption of this uh, very complex network, explaining why we need to think in meta networks now with preservation of the personality of the patient and the metacognition. How is it possible? Because fortunately, the brain is here in order to compensate our mistake. Typically, we recently published two papers regarding the fact that when you have insular tumor, which is very frequent, as you know, in low grade glioma, please, before any surgery, look at the morphometry of the contralateral insula, and you will see that there is an increase of the volume. But there is also, then, thanks to this modification of the morphology, an increase of the connectivity based on the control lateral hemisphere. And then that explains why I removed 300 so low grade glioma within the paralympic system in my life with a 99% of reliability. This is true following, of course, uh, the SMS syndrome, you know very well. And by doing now, fMRI here activation, but you will see also resting state before and after surgery, then we can start how the patient is able to recover thanks to the contralateral recruitment of uh, uh, SMA and premolar cortex. And thanks to that, as you know probably, but I will show you a scoop, um, we started to reoperate uh, the patient by uh, using these mechanisms of neuroplasticity occurring after the first surgery in order to reoperate the patient five to 10 years later and then to increase the extent of resection and then increase the median survival by preserving the quality of life here uh, uh, despite the uh, resection of the so called knob of the hand in a guitarist, but uh, thanks to the subcortical. Preserva preservation of the subcortical connectivity. This is true here for the so-called vernicus area, which does not exist, but just the connectivity underlying this area with seven layers. I cannot, of course, details, but you have uh, uh, the uh, ILF, you have the arcuate, uh, you have the vertical part of the not insist. And same thing regarding Broca's area, I'm sorry, sometimes uh, involved in semantic processing in this patient during the first surgery. And many years later, I came back and I was able to remove more exactly as I did this morning because it was a young lady I operated on five years uh, um, uh, ago uh, with a perfect uh, recovery in the meantime. And this is the reason why sometimes so you can do this very impressive and uh, aggressive resection regarding both hemispheres, but with a perfect uh, uh, preservation of the cognition and emotion as we reported after five hours of cognitive assessment. So my results about uh, the first 850 patients with low-grade glioma operated on within Broca's area, Wernicke's area behind the lab vein, a Rolandic system, uh, parietal lobe, paralambic, uh, corpus callosum, and so on, mortality zero because I have a very good team, especially good anesthesiologist and good speech therapist. So less than 1% of severe permanent deficit, but also 25% of improvement by doing extensive resection, plus 80% of positive impact on epilepsy. More you remove around the tumor, more you will increase the control of epilepsy, not related to the cortex within the core of the tumor in the gray glioma. So definitely, recently, we say that it's not enough to say our patients are not aphasic hemiplegic. Okay, we preserve the quality of life thanks to the cognition and emotion. What about the return to work? And we reported that more than 97% of our patients resumed their job. This is what they would like. And in incidental low-grade glioma, we did Preoperative and postoperative cognitive assessment. Uh, this is in, in press in journal neurosurgery with the vast majority, not only with stability, but also improvement after surgery despite extensive resection. Why the patient, according to the vast majority of neurosurgeons, are well before surgery because it's an incidental discovery. No, 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 they are not so well. Please be objective and deal 
with the plasticity, and this is the scoop. Now we will publish in a journal in your surgery in one to two months, a uh, um, unique series with further surgery of low-grade layer man. You can see the median survival, which is almost uh, 18 years. And each time I re re it on, we induce again mechanisms from neuroplasticity, not only between the first and second surgery, but also between the second and third surgery, thanks to cognitive rehabilitation adapted to the neuropsychological assessment objectively performed before and after each treatment and with this kind of median survival. And of course, as you know, this is a prospective collection of data. So that means for juniors that you have to elaborate by yourself as in your surgeons, this kind of model based on your knowledge of the structure and the function of the Y matter tract and to be your scientist. And you have to know the limitation of brain plasticity. We publish for younger people this atlas in the MNI template. So you can use it in order to optimize your 3D representation of the networks. And definitely we can in now use uh, this uh, fMRI resting state before and after surgery in order to better understand the dynamics of these networks, the, typically by demonstrating, for instance, so that there was a decrease of the interhemispheric connectivity when you have the classical SMS syndrome, and then a re-increase between both hemispheres when the patient recovered. But one step forward, we published recently the fact that when you do the same thing within the so-called language network following resection of Broca's area, for instance, you have not only reorganization, reconfiguration of the language network, which is made by different sublanguage, remember the dorsal pathway, the ventral pathway, and so on, but also modulating the connectivity between networks and especially with the network involving attentional processing and executive function. We uh, detailed a, a little bit. I have no time enough. I'm sorry about that. So that means that it's not just within networks, but also between networks. And this is the principle of meta networking brain. And then it seems to be complex. It is, but it's to help younger uh, uh, surgeon. We published oh, one year ago about 2,000 simulation sites, uh, including uh, the Y matter tract. So not just a statistics like DTI, but the real truth when you are into the brain of human beings and when you stimulate, you induce a transitory deficit in 16 functional domains. And you have this template, which is totally free for you to better build your own mental imagery and then to use it as a pre-planning before to go to the operating theater, because of course, I will not prone to operating theater because this is just a probabilistic atlas and you have to adapt into the OR to each patient according to the online mapping and monitoring. And now, if you have this minimal common brain into the OR, I mean, if you cut it, you know that the patient will never recover, then you will have 99% of good results. But if it's true for us, it's true for radiotherapists. So please push them to be aware about the fact that when they radiate focally, as they said, if this is the crossing uh, uh, road between the dorsal and ventral pathway because you stopped at this level because functional boundaries, they will induce cognitive deficit and everyone knows that. So please use chemotherapy earlier because it does not induce any cognitive deficit even with more than 10 years of follow-up. And then you will reduce surgery and you will preserve the most complex abstract function to preserve, typically the executive functions and the personality. So to conclude, now the goal for me at least is to better understand relationships between networks themselves constituted by a mosaic of sub-networks, of course, with mosaics of cortical areas re, uh, distributed at the level of both hemispheres and with um, 
many white matter tracts just in between. And this is true also between both hemispheres. And this is the reason why we were able to publish one year ago in physiological reviews. So the Bible of human physiology, you see, it's beyond wake surgery, it's beyond glioma surgery, it's beyond your surgery. This is just how the brain is processing. Namely, I will not detail, but to, to try to summarize in one sentence, perpetual modification changes uh, within uh, um, and between networks, allowing to understand how it's possible to see a perpetual succession of uh, equilibrium states in order to adapt to the environment and to have uh, a creative behavior as a human being. I cannot tell you more just uh, in 30 minutes. But just now, to conclude really and to tell you there is a direct application into the operating theater, please ask to the patient to do many tasks simultaneously. And sometimes you will be surprised that patient is still able to speak, still able to move. So you see, I use very uh, basic tasks, but he's not able to do both simultaneously. And at that time, you will predict that patient will not be aphasic hemiplegic and you're right, but you will say, my patient is well, and you're wrong because your patient is not able to do multitasking and will not return to a normal life. So the conclusion is, uh, we have to use systematically cognitive and behavioral assessment before, during, and after surgery. But to push our colleagues, new oncologists, and especially radiotherapists to do exactly the same thing, and not just to claim my patients are well, because this is simply untrue. To do intraoperative cortical and subcortical mapping beyond the use of technology into the operating theater. Never the robot will give you this kind of information regarding self-evaluation of yourself, monitoring of metacognition and multitasking while you are stimulating the white matter tracts. Immediate postoperative evaluation in order to do a specific rehabilitation and then to give the opportunity for the patient not only to talk and to walk, but also to enjoy a perfect normal life by preserving the emotion and the personality. So now for younger people, you have to understand that if you participate as a neurosurgeon in the better understanding of the functions of the connectome, you will increase both the oncological and functional outcomes and you will participate also in the wonderful adventures of your science. If I can do that, you can do that. So now just do it. Thank you. <laughs>